In this week's visit to the museum, we take a look at some period clothing and go behind the scenes to see how these fragile historic items are preserved for future generations. Museum director Jan Russell tells us more. Welcome to the Marietta Museum of History and this is our Home Life Gallery. This particular corner is our tribute to Alice McClellan Burney. She's the founder of the National PTA and a native of Marietta. We have several things. We have a portrait of Miss Alice, her secretary and desk. Supposedly, she actually signed some letters for the PTA and a couple of her dining room chairs. Um, this dress we have did not belong to Miss Burney. We don't actually have any of her clothing, just a few of her belongings. But this is a, from about 1908. It's similar to something that she would have worn as she was on her mission to start the PTA. It's beautiful purple and lavender with lots of lace. As you can see, it has become very fragile. There's some fraying in the um, fabric on the overlay, but it has the cinched in waist, which was typical of 1908. The collars had gotten a little bit more open and the skirts had trimmed down. In the 1860s, what we're all used to in the um, Gone with the Wind era, the big puff skirts, as we went into the later 1860s, skirts got flatter in the front and bigger in the back, and we started into the bustle. And then as time went by, and turn her, they got, skirts got slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. We lost the bustle, and then we went with a more straight, more tailored skirt length, which I'm most pleased with. Now we're in the stairwell. This is one of the original staircases for the Kennesaw House. There originally were two staircases, and in the renovation during the 1970s, this was the only one that was saved. These are the original handrails, spindles, and steps that go up to. Originally, it would have gone all the way to the third floor. Now it actually stops at the second floor. Um, what we have in our Fashion of the Month currently are some items from the estate of George Keeler who lived in the house called Tranquilla that's at the corner of Kennesaw Avenue and Atwood Drive. Um, after Mr. Keeler's passing, the family was very generous to the museum and these are some of the things we have. We have a bodice from the 1930s that was probably originally part of a dress with lots of wonderful beading on it. A lace bodice that was worn in the 1890s. And then my personal favorite, this is a wedding dress. This is the wedding dress of Jane Atwood Camp she was the lady of the house when it was built. She married in 1850, when she, and that's when she married George Hull Camp. They came to Marietta from the coastal area, from down around the Darien area, and by way of Roswell. But she wore this dress in the 1850s. You can see it's a slightly off the shoulder with lots of wonderful lace trim, many layers of lace. She would have had her corset and her petticoat and her under petticoat and her hoop on underneath this. And I am going to turn this around because the back side is just as pretty as the front. And it is a little bit fragile. You can see where we've got some tearing. But if you will notice, there are hooks and silk ribbons. She was laced up into her dress just like you would see in a lot of the movies that are about that particular time period. And at the middle and the bodice is full of lots of nice strong stays. This would be her veil that she would have worn. And from what we know, Jane had bright red hair. And it would have just laid over her head just like that and then come down the sides of her shoulders. But there's lots of just beautiful lace work on it. And we're so lucky that we have this and it's in such fabulous condition. Now we're on the third floor of the Kennesaw House. This is not technically a display space or an exhibit space for the museum. We're currently in our conference room. These are some items that we're getting ready to put out on display in our fashion of the month. We decided that since it was June and the temperatures were reaching the 90s, we'd do a little bit of summer fun and display some swimsuits. Our first one was worn by James B. Glover III, and this is his Georgia Tech swim team bathing suit from 1917, 1918, and this is the little swim team's emblem there. And as you can tell, he was, um, I guess, a small fellow, but the guys at the turn of the century were a lot smaller than today's gentlemen anyway. It's a one piece. Um, those are his leg holes there, and this is what they would have worn for the swim team. We actually have a photo of his entire swim team. 
Now this is one a little bit more like the public would have worn. This is 1920s. It is knit. Um, it's actually a knit wool. So you can imagine what that probably felt like when it got wet. This is considered a unisex swimsuit. Would have been worn by men and women. Uh, majority of the time, this one was worn by men. Maybe some of the little bit looser women might have worn this particular one. Generally in the 1920s, the ladies were still a little bit more covered up, may have come a little bit further down their legs. This is a 1940s ladies swimsuit. Um, considered to be a little bit risque at that particular time period because the legs came up what they would have thought might have been a little bit high, but it does have this modest apron front. Of course, by today's standards, this is a large bathing suit that covers up a lot. This one is actually a 1970s swimsuit that is styled to look more like a 1940s or a 1950s. It too has the more modest leg length and the apron front that comes down so it looks more like a dress. At the Marietta Museum of History, as you can see behind me, we have lots of clothing. We display about oh, maybe anywhere from 10 to 20 pieces of our clothing at one time in the general history section or in the home life gallery. Of course, we have even more of the military uniforms on display. One of the things that we like to do is to rotate our exhibits so that the clothing will last longer. So for every piece of clothing you see that's out on display right now, there might be two or three pieces, maybe even up to 10 pieces in the back that's in storage. We use our archival boxes so that we can keep everything acid free and hopefully keep it as long as possible. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize about the Marietta Museum of History is we purchase very little of our collection. I think I can safely say that 95 percent of our collection is donated by individuals in the community, especially from our clothing collection. If you were interested in donating something to the Marietta Museum of History, please call us at 770-794-5710 or go to our website at www.mariettahistory.org.